Levinson, and welcome to Light On, Light Through, episode 45, celebrating Sputnik, or Sputnik, as some people call it. It means fellow traveler, and this past Thursday, October 4th, was the 50th anniversary of the launch of Sputnik, which was the first artificial satellite to circle the planet. It was soon followed by Sputnik 2, in which uh, the Soviet Union sent two dogs up into space. That was in 1958. Then the first human in space, Yuri Gagarin, in 1961. The Telstar telecom satellite in 1962. And then we walked on the moon, Armstrong and Aldrin, in 1969. Now, most of those events prior to our walking on the moon were Soviet, not U.S. accomplishments. But, you know, it doesn't really matter. I think humans in space is what counts. Yet, everyone, of course, knows that Sputnik set off the space race, which we in the United States eventually, quote, won, unquote, in 1969. And what did that victory get us? Well, we got a space shuttle with brave astronauts, some of whom lost their lives. But no one has gotten too far beyond this planet. We've sent robots to Mars, that's exciting, but robots neither laugh nor cry. After all, they're not human. And so, on this 50th anniversary of Sputnik, I can only hope that we start doing a little better. True, we're in the space age, but just barely, and civilization is filled, unfortunately, with examples of major inventions that stayed dormant for centuries, even millennia, and the societies that created those inventions really never made much use of them. The Chinese invention of the printing press way back in 700 or 800 A.D. would be an excellent example. And its failure to be used for a mass print in popular culture, I think, is one of the most vivid examples. But there are many others. The Aztecs, for example, invented the wheel, but they never really used it for any kind of transport technology, for any kind of transportation. The wheel in Aztec technology was confined to use in children's toys. And in ancient Alexandria, Heron and other geniuses invented the basis of motion pictures. They understood steam power. They had all kinds of automatic devices, none of which really led to much until thousands of years later. So I think it's very important that as we contemplate the first 50 years of the space age, we make sure we don't end up like ancient Alexandria. We don't end up like the Chinese and the invention of the printing press back in 700 AD, which had almost no impact on Chinese life and didn't become important in human affairs until Gutenberg introduced the printing press into Europe. That took place in the 1450s. So let's not wait 700 more years to really get out into space. Let's use this anniversary as an occasion to reaffirm our commitment to going out into the cosmos and taking our rightful place out there as part of that cosmos. The universe awaits us. The Light on Light Through podcast is proud to be part of the Blueberry Network. That's blueberry with no ease dot com. And now a word from our new sponsor. Entertainment Weekly says the plot to save Socrates is challenging fun. The New York Daily News says it's a Da Vinci-esque thriller. And Curled Up with a Good Book says... Sierra Waters is sexy as hell. You can find out more about The Plot to Save Socrates by Paul Levinson at theplottosavesocrates.com. (laughs) 
And continuing our discussion of Sputnik on its 50th anniversary. First, you may have heard a phone ringing in the first part of this podcast. I could edit it out, but you know what? I think I'm going to leave that in. It sort of underscores the urgency of getting out into space now and getting beyond this planet. And that leads to what I want to talk about a little bit more now. What happened to the move out into space? How come we made so much great progress in those years back in the 1950s and the 1960s, culminating with our walking on the moon in 1969? And yet we've done so little since then. Well, I think there have been a variety of causes. One, it was a space race. And once the Soviet Union lost it, once we beat the Soviet Union in our race to get to the moon, It took some of the wind out of our sails, and we lost some of the impetus, some of that military edge that we had in the 1960s, that motivation for us to get out into space. And I think that underlines the danger of attaching anything as profound as the human species getting off of this planet into a political competition between countries. I think we have much more important reasons than that for getting out into space. Now, another problem was the election of Richard Nixon to the presidency in 1968. And unfortunately, Nixon saw space as Kennedy territory. This, of course, was because John F. Kennedy said we're going to get a man on the moon in 1969 or we're going to get a man on the moon before the end of the decade of the 1960s, and we did in 1969. And Nixon was in office then, and Nixon felt the strong yearning that people had in the United States all over the world for a president like John F. Kennedy who, of course, had been assassinated in 1963. And whether consciously or unconsciously, I think Nixon did what he could to sabotage the space program. But we should make no mistake about it. The Democrats weren't much good either. Walter Mondale, who would later be vice president, who ran against Ronald Reagan and lost the campaign for the presidency in the 1980s, Well, Mondale was a senator who led the charge against increasing funding for space in the early 1970s. But most of all, I think there's been a failure to present space to the American people, to the world, as what it really is and what it most holds out for us. It's more, I think, obviously, than a military advantage, but it's more than even a scientific advantage. What space is, I think, is nothing less than the capacity for we, the human species, to finally get a little more inkling of what it is that we're doing here on this world, in this universe what life is really all about. And I think everyone wants to know more about this. And in that sense, getting out into space almost satisfies a religious yearning, because I think religions try to answer this question as well. But of course, no one has any real answers beyond just, well, faith and a just sort of general sense of spirituality. But The reason that we don't have more than that is we'll never be able to get a perspective on who we truly are as long as we're confined down here to planet Earth. So let's hope on this 50th anniversary that we finally, in the next 50 years, begin moving off this world, not leaving it. There'll always be a need for a home planet but getting beyond this little tiny rock that we happen to inhabit in this huge universe. You are listening to a Runaway Network podcast from runawaynetwork.com. And hey, speaking of anniversaries, there's another anniversary coming up on October 21st. Not quite as important as the 50th anniversary of Sputnik. 
and nothing close to 50 years. But October 21st will be a year since I put up the first Light On, Light Through podcast back in 2006. That's right, October 21st, 2007 will mark the first anniversary of Light On, Light Through. I hope you've been enjoying it. I intend to continue talking for years to come. I'm having a lot of fun doing this. And I want to give everyone an invitation, really an opportunity to help promote your own podcast, whatever you like, just your name. Send me a 10-second greeting in which you talk about anything that you've heard on Light On, Light Through in the past year. And I will put all those together, and I will put that all into a special edition of Light On, Light Through that I'll be putting out on October 21st, really just, uh, well, about 10 days or so from now. Uh, And again, uh, no more than 10 seconds. A 10-second MP3, and you can mention your name, the name of your podcast, whatever it is you're up to. But all I ask is that you mention something that I talked about in one of the episodes of Light On, Light Through. It could be this one on the Sputnik anniversary or any of the episodes in the past year. And, of course, you can find those episodes on lightonlightthrough.com. Send the MP3 to levinson.paul at gmail. Okay, that's levinson.paul at gmail. No more than 10 seconds because I expect to get a lot of these, but I will include every single 10-second greeting that I receive. I'll be doing the podcast pretty close to October 21st, so if you want to do this, send it to me as soon as you can. And again, that's levinson.paul at gmail. And this brings us to our Flashes section, and I'm going to talk just about the new television season in this edition of Flashes, because there's been so many great new shows on television, and actually so many shows returning to television. Some of these I've been talking about already, but I just want to mention again, Californication is a spectacular show on Showtime. Tell Me You Love Me is an excellent show on HBO. As far as great shows returning, Heroes is now back on NBC. The first two episodes were fine, and they had some good time travel tricks. In fact, among my favorite time travel gambits of all time is when the hero goes back in time and is trying to prevent something bad from happening, and the hero's very presence makes that happen. Or the sort of reverse of that, the hero goes back in time to ensure or save safeguard that something good in history does in fact happen. Well, Hero, H-I-R-O in Heroes, did exactly that, that second thing in the second episode of Heroes. So as a time travel fan, I was delighted to see that. Brotherhood and Dexter have returned to Showtime. They are two spectacular shows, so I highly recommend those. I was fortunate enough to see the first four episodes of both on an advanced DVD that I was sent, and I highly recommend them. And I think on the basis of either of those shows, but certainly with both of those shows together, not to mention Californication, I think that Showtime is now the best network on television. I think it has surpassed HBO, and uh, HBO has long surpassed the networks. Even though they do continue to have great shows, the networks do, but I think by and large, cable is out there uh, way ahead of the networks. Now, getting back to NBC and, and also time travel, there's a great new time travel series, Journeyman. I've seen the first two episodes of it. It's a lot like Quantum Leap, but It deals much more with the story of the journeyman. You may recall in Quantum Leap, we didn't really see too much about Sam and his personal life. Most of the stories were about the leaps. Well, here, the leaps are important in Journeyman, but there's also an extremely interesting story about journeyman. And by the way, the lead character is played by Kevin McKidd, who some of you may recall played Vorenus on HBO's Rome, so he's a really fine actor. 
Now, if you want to listen to podcast reviews, short podcast reviews about many of these shows, no more than two or three minutes long, go to LevinsonNewsClips.com. That's LevinsonNewsClips, one word, dot com, and you'll find a whole bunch of short podcasts, reviews of Heroes, Dexter, and so on. If you'd like to read my blog post about these shows, you'll find those at Infinite Re- regress.tv that's one word infinite regress.tv and that's the sweet music of our promo suite and first and always mikethinks.com hey mike has a spiffy new web page all kinds of nice new graphics the latest edition of Mike Thinks has Mike musing about the dangers of hybrid cars in parking lots. And he does raise a good point because, you know, when the engine is off and the car is working in stealth mode, people around you can't hear the car. So Mike has a good point. Nonetheless, I think that these hybrid cars are the wave of the future. And as you know, I love my Prius. And actually, I enjoy the stealth engine, especially if I'm driving on a quiet road somewhere in the countryside. And that way, I don't scare the animals away. And I can almost pretend I'm someone like uh, in a Walt Disney movie, zippity doo with all these butterflies and bluebirds flying around me. But Mike, as always, does have a good point. So when you get a chance, get over there to MikeThinks.com, the savviest podcast in town. And also in our promo suite, once again, I invite you to listen to Sean Farrell's fabulous patio book of my first novel, The Silk Code. So listen, I had a great time talking to you today, as always. Make sure you stay tuned for future episodes of LightOnLightThrough.com, including our special anniversary will be one year old on October 21st. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and enjoy. the Mike Thinks Podcast, www.mikethinks.com. News and current events with an opinion. The Mike Thinks Podcast. It's the news you missed. www.mikethinks.com. The Locus Award-winning novel by Paul Levinson comes to life in this free podcast novel. Journey into the ancient world. Witness the wonder of ages past, and join Phil D'Amato in a struggle against forces both ruthless and unseen. Visit www.thesilkcode.blogspot.com to learn more about the author and the novel. And subscribe today at patiobooks.com. Join the battle, witness the wonder, or forever be victim to the awe and power of the Silk Code. Phil D'Amato is ready. Are you?